Thank you, Minister, for coming in this afternoon. I know how busy you are, so it's always good to have the Minister of Finance here. Um, I will always say that governments don't create employment, but they do create the environment for employment. And taking away, or if you don't take, taking away the 9% VAT rate will certainly not be a good environment to continue employment. The, this government published the, the Tourism Recovery Plan in 2020 to 2023 in October 2021. A total of 75% of spending on Irish tourism relies on foreign investors. A total of 100,000 people in accommodation and food services received the pandemic unemployment payment, with more tourism and, and hotel jobs receiving government wage subsidies. The government agreed in May this year to extend the 9% VAT rate that currently applies to the tourism and hospitality sectors for the further six months until the end of February 2023 at an additional cost of £250 million. No further extension to this measure is envisaged, so 13.5% rate will apply to these sectors from the 1st of March 2023. Adrian Common, CEO of the Restaurant Association of Ireland, said the 9% rate must stay in place due to the ongoing cost of living and energy crisis. If the rate of VAT rises to 13.5%, this would be a 50% increase and make Ireland the second highest in the EU for this rate. The 9% VAT rate ending in February of next year will only increase costs for consumers and raise concerns about Ireland's competitiveness compared to our EU counterparts, Mr Common said. Minister Carter Martin said that she fought to retain the 9% hospitality rate in the 2023 budget and that lower rate has been vital to the sector post-COVID recovery in light of the recent forecast from the, I from the IMF. We need to keep the recovery up. Now, I'd like you to also talk about the IMF today and if you could give me some insight on, on, their, on, their, uh, on the visit there last week because they said things are going to get much worse. So many businesses operating in the sector are facing steep competition with inflationary pressures mounting. Uh, what future changes are envisaged should uh, be balanced against the likely impact to small and medium-sized businesses in the, in the coming years? Connor Walsh, tax partner at Deloitte said. As always, multinational companies will be able to absorb the VAT hike and it will be the SMEs working in the sector that will struggle, falter and fail. The estimated cost to the exchequer of the planned extension is £250 million. I'm not sure I even want to know the overall total we spent across COVID in supporting businesses, households and individuals, but I'm sure this measure is a drop in that ocean. A VAT hike in the coming year will kill businesses and instead of the exchequer getting 9%, uh, instead of 13.5%, they'll be getting nothing from sunk hotels and, and venues, which will be spe uh, spending out of, out of their own pockets on welfare for these people. 500 hotels in this country at this moment in time, one in four are paid by the government in relation to the 30,000 beds that we're providing for U U Ukrainians. That is a commitment that we, this government has made. The hike of the VAT rate is a slap in the face for hotels and restaurants who are rowing their own boat trying to manage this crisis. Many of these will go to the wall, and that is the fact. Employers are being crippled now with the PRSI. The, the, the new year will see the new minimum wage increase, the pension auto-enrolment, and the introdu introduction of sta uh, statutory uh, sick pay. With the cost of fuel rising and the other costs of doing business, how are, we going to find, how are they going to find the extra 4.5% hike in VAT? The way, I'd like to know how many have warehoused their taxes in relation to the, vest, uh, the restaurants and the hotels. Do we know that amount? Um, because if, they haven't, if we haven't got that figure, if some of those people have warehoused their, 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 their taxes, and they, that's been now extended out to May, uh, that's been extended out to May, they may as well close up. They may as well close their doors after Christmas because they're, they're not going to be able to afford the, the, the tax hikes, uh, the rates going up, and they're not going to be able to afford the, 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 the warehousing of the taxes the repayments. So people, people are already looking to see what nights they're going to be able to go out. They're not going to be able to go out at night during the weekends. They're already talking about that. They're going out for their lunches, but they're not going out at night. So daytime trade may survive. And we also need to look at, you know, the em employing, uh, employment. Um, people don't want to work at night. People are refusing to work at night. They don't want to work the weekends. And I raised it with the Minister last week about uh, the 18 to 25 year olds. We have 20,000 people on that payment at this moment. 18 year olds getting, uh, 18 to 21 year olds can get 117 euro, which will increase to 100 uh, by 12 euro in January. For what? 
For what, Minister? For sitting at home, doing nothing. We should be creating the environment for them to work. So I would welcome you to look at that. I don't know what you could do between now and the budget and the, fi the finance bill, but there's, there is 20,000 people earning €117 Euro a week at this moment in time. Um, and I would, I would ask you to create the environment for them to get out to work. Um, so that's basically all I have to say to you on that, Minister. But, you know, you have a very big task ahead. Uh, I'm not too sure if, if the country is aware of the magnitude of the severity with regard to the energy crisis that's coming down the line and the various things that are happening in the, in the worldwide, worldwide stock market. So I'd like you to elaborate on that today because that is going to affect all sectors, not just the hospitality sector. Thank, Thank you. Much you. Indeed, Senator Coe.